I run, as you might know, the Imperial Syncope Diagnostic Unit. And I also am one of the cardiologists at Welbeck. And part of the group experience that we've had and we've published on is this phenomena called autonomic dysfunction in long COVID. And this, in my experience, is a partial explanation or a full explanation for the 50 to 60% of patients who have the kind of symptoms you describe. And one of the most, in my view, specific symptoms that you have described this afternoon is the fact that your symptoms get worse when you stand up. And also the other telltale sign is your symptoms are worse than the mornings. And I, I want to try and uh, take a, a bit of time to explain why that might be, and maybe then talk about some of the interventions that are possible and the interventions that you have had. This, this diagram really illustrates what happens in the context of autonomic dysfunction in, in long COVID. Now, as it says on the website name, Stop Fainting is a resource that's freely available to help guide patients to stop having what we call basal vagal syncope or a common faint. But what we're finding very interestingly with a cohort of patients who have long COVID or long hauler COVID is that they get symptoms when they're standing up that are exacerbated. So the palpitation, shortness of breath, sweatiness, dizziness, fatigue, and sometimes brain fog, uh, and even gastrointestinal symptoms, which thankfully you don't have, can all be exacerbated when you stand up. And if I just show you very briefly what happens, but when you first stand up, your blood pressure falls ever so slightly. I'm going to take a screenshot now. And this, this blood pressure fall, uh, occurs because a bit of your uh, blood is starting to pull down into your lower limbs here. And this blood that's pulling into your lower limbs will necessarily empty the heart a little bit here. And therefore the blood pressure has fallen a, a little bit. Now, this is typically not a problem because people compensate in a way that maintains the blood pressure that I'll explain later on. But if you stand, particularly on a hot day, or if you're very dehydrated, or, for example, first thing in the morning, when you are likely to be the most dehydrated you will be in a 24-hour period. Why? Because A, you don't drink anything overnight. Most people don't. Most people are sleeping throughout the night, so they're producing urine. And like you said, when it's hot at night, you sweat under the sheets or you vasodilate. And you may not realize you're sweating because you evaporate straight away. That is a way you cool down. But all through the night, you're losing water through sweating, through breathing. When you breathe against a cold window, you'll see the moisture build up against that cold window. You are losing that every time you breathe at night and you're producing urine. So the first thing in the morning is when you're most likely to be very dehydrated. And when you're dehydrated and you stand up, you get this phenomena where the blood pressure starts to fall greater. So here, what you can see is that the blood pressure or the blood volume falls into the lower limbs. And this blood starts to fill up the lower limbs here. You can see that filling. And because of that, the heart here starts to empty of blood and the blood pressure falls down slightly. So here we have a situation where blood pressure falls. And the blood pressure falls because the cardiac or, or the stroke volume, that means each stroke of this heartbeat is reduced, let's say in this extreme example, by 50%. So you're pushing up blood with 50% less volume than the previous heartbeat, just because you're standing and the blood is pooling. Now what that does is that you have very sensitive receptors in your neck here, and this is called the carotid baroreflex. And these sensors sense that your blood pressure is falling, send a signal to the brain. The brain reacts by giving you what's called a flight or fight response. And this response is also known as the adrenaline response or the stress response. Adrenaline, cortisol, stress. And these are all the stress hormones that are released when you're standing up. And all it takes is a stand. And the reason you need adrenaline is because when it's released, it does a very helpful thing in the case of low blood pressure. It will boost the heart rate. 
because ultimately stroke volume times heart rate equals the cardiac output. That means how much fluid is circulating around your body in any one minute can be enhanced even in a relatively dry state by increasing your heart rate. And the way your heart rate is increased is through adrenaline. So adrenaline here causes your heart rate to go up. And that explains one of your dominant symptoms, which is the palpitations. What adrenaline can also do is it can also cause vasoconstriction. This term means that the, um, that the vessels in your lower limbs are starting to squeeze. The direct impact of adrenaline on your vessels is to squeeze these vessels to push the blood back upwards. And this blood comes back into the heart, fills the heart, and then you downregulate adrenaline. Now that is what happens in most cases normally, including in you before COVID. Whenever you stood up, whenever I stand up, we tend to drop our volume a little bit with gravity, it's only natural. But because we have a slight adrenaline surge, our heart rate increases, and then we have a vasoconstrictor effect on our legs, our heart fills again, the blood is full of oxygen and blood and blood pressure that the adrenaline is then wound down in a space of five to ten seconds but in your case there is a spiral because you can't seem to keep enough blood pressure coming back to your heart so although it's trying very hard your fight or flight or stress response is trying very hard you are not creating enough cardiac output because you're pooling too much in your lower limbs and therefore this vicious cycle continues. You still get a low blood pressure. That dials up more and more adrenaline, giving you more and more palpitations. But the adrenaline itself has a very, very important effect in that it makes your brain hypervigilant. And this is one of the potential explanations why sleep is very difficult in you. Because the vigilance you have with running on high all day and running on high doesn't mean psychologically you're high it means your adrenaline is high because you're standing upright because it needs to be high to maintain your cardiac output and this hypervigilant sleep uh, state will cause insomnia and will cause disturbed sleep will cause sweatiness and all this if you like are a manifestation of the adrenaline in your system so you very helpfully use the term fright or flight response it, feel sometimes that you're in a fright or flight mode. And I think that is exactly right. That is exactly what is happening in your body when you are in this state where when you stand up, the blood pulls down. So that's one way of explaining why you have the symptoms you, you have. 